media storm with this whole situation around Tiger Woods. Wow. I must say that I was I was a bit disappointed to hear it. As, as with a lot of his fans, I'm sure. I mean, great athlete and, of course, what it means to me as a person saturated with melanin. Ha, 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 please. A, an icon is an icon. And whoever would... Uh, believe in their gifts and and just have a chance to be amazed by a phenomenal talent and this talent being in the limelight and all the Reebok endorsements and or Nike or in the in, in, in whether with cars the whole thing is you know he's been in the light for quite some time now but this new light that he's been in due to certain choices, multiple choices that he's made, has put him in an interesting position. But it's, it's interesting to me that media or so much time is being put on, you know, focusing the issue and, and, and sort of... There, it seems to me that there's some hypocrisy, especially when it comes to the society. We're spending so much time telling him that what he did was wrong, <laughs> when in fact, he's just doing what, well, he's just upholding a Hollywood dream. In my opinion, he's upholding a Hollywood dream. Um, as far as him being unfaithful to his wife and so forth, you know, I... I believe in one man with one woman just for the rest of their lives and keeping their vows serious and, and and no cheating. But that's not what we encourage in this society, do we? We encourage getting so much of this and so much of that so we can be at a place and position to be able to take on the smorgasbord of delights. I'll say this for Tiger, for people who want to get on his case, you know, you said you don't hear. I'm not saying what he did was right. He that he was straight up in adultery. Adultery is adultery, and it's 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 not good. It threatened. It's a big threat to marriage. But as far as why he did it, if you want to get into that, and why would he do such a thing? Let's take a little trip back in history, shall we? <laughs> or just meditate on kings of the past who did some really kooky things, you know, from different lands and so forth. Men of power have always, especially kings, like King David and Solomon, men of power have always had uh, their extra wives or their extra affairs or their extra concubines as, that, as how they were put. And... Uh, uh, and it was just another accentuating thing to their holdings and their sense of value and, and, and prowess is based on how many different women they could have. We live in a society today that tells us or tells men that you're not a complete alpha male until you've had every good-looking woman on the planet go through your bed. That's... the. <laughs> You can't tell me that's that's wrong. You can't tell me that every VH1 I, male icon with his big muscles and prowess is funny. I laugh at shows like The Tool Academy. You have all these alpha males with their big muscles and build and their they know how to work their game and so forth. And uh, you think... They spend all that time working out their bodies, talking their game, pushing uh, pushing weak elements aside, uh, 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 building themselves, doing the image, going through the motions, just so they can be with one woman? No. They'll go with the whole Victoria's Secret Rasta if they were given the chance, especially if that Victoria's Secret Rasta of girls were telling them, uh, you look good and all this stuff. We're, we're, we're not taught in this society to value one, one man 
monog monogamous relationships. We're not taught in this society to, to uh, be faithful. We're taught to bang as many different people and some, in certain cases things as we can. Or we're taught to be whores when it comes to money and people and that's, that's the values of our society. All Tiger was doing was upholding that value and now he's being punished for it. Well, anybody seen the movie A Happily Ever After with Drew Barrymore? And I, th I think one of the most interesting lines was that quote from that, uh, from that, uh, it's this utopian society book. If you, basically, she says, she says it more eloquently, I don't know, word for word. Basically, if a society is creating conditions to create a monster with certain characteristics, and then you punish them for doing the things that you've conditioned them to do, what else is to be concluded that first you make the monsters, then you punish them? I mean, I've, lately I've been watching walkthroughs of uh, the video game God of War, you know, the God of War 1, God of War 2, and so forth, and uh, basically... That's Kratos' issue. He's tired of the bullpucky. He's tired of people saying he's a monster when it was, or, or the gods calling him a monster when it is the gods that were responsible for making him who he was. Messing with him, messing with his family. It started off with the deceit of Ares and then the uh, betrayal of Zeus and, and all through it, the vexation of Athena, if you think about it. But, you know, there's, there's just ethics in how you should treat people. <laughs> but, of course, speaking of ethics, what does this society know about that? I mean, it, it's been said that a lot of the things we call bad are really good, and a lot of things we call good are really bad. That's just the topsy-turviness of where our society is right now. And, um... I, not not to be offensive, but it's it's kind of godless. I mean, at least there's certain virtues as charity and 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 long suffering and and bearing with one another. But what we we live in a society that takes meekness for weakness <laughs> and just topsy turvy. But so, so, Tiger was just upholding our core values as a society. If we want different results, we need to change our values. We need to value one person for one, uh, one monogamous relationship. So that's, we need to know what faithfulness means, what it means to love somebody with your mind, with your heart, with your whole soul, with your spirit, let alone your body, and be committed. That's, we need to get back to those roots. And it starts by believing that we all have a wonderful Father who made all things and who made us to be complete. But it seems like so many people are taking their own paths to completion, and it's only leading to destruction. So just, just a quick note. Just a quick note. A lot of people are afraid of this book. This is on a side note. This whole, the Holy Bible. A lot of people are afraid of this book. Either they don't know how to read it, or it's written by man, or so forth. But all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for reproof, or correction, instruction, and in righteousness, that the man of God might be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. But there's this is also a historical documentary that's inspired. And one of the books that I like <laughs> that has me blushing all the time is Song of Solomon. For those of you that don't know, God wants you to get it on. God wants you to have the best intimacy that you could ever have. He created it. He created intercourse to be fun. He created it to be enjoyable, to be arousing and double, double whammy goodness. The problem 
so it, it never was God that says you shouldn't have it. 